All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to True Crime Loser. I hope you're doing well. So as most of you probably saw, Ghislaine Maxwell, the procurer herself, Epstein's right-hand freak, after a year of everyone kind of sitting around scratching their head, being like, what about Ghislaine? Wasn't she with Epstein the whole thing, the whole step of the way? Where is she? After a full year, pretty much, late last week, she was finally arrested. And she was at a secluded mansion in New Hampshire. There were rumors that she was out east here, and then there was rumors that she was in L.A., or rumors that she had gone back to France. And she was in New Hampshire in a secluded mansion that was purchased months back uh, from an LLC 20 to 30 law enforcement office officers showed up late last week. I heard kicked the door down. I'm sure that raised the heart rate just a little bit. Kicked the door down, arrested her without incident, brought her to the jail in New Hampshire. There was a hearing uh, appearance type thing there. And some victims and I guess some journalists were allowed to listen in on the audio of that. It was remote because of COVID. So they got to listen into the audio. So Virginia Roberts said she couldn't see her, but she could hear a British woman crying, her eyes out sobbing, saying, how could this happen? How could this happen? And the answer, Ghislaine, is because you're an unspeakably evil person that preyed on children for decades. I think that's, yeah, that's how it happened. So she's you know, crying, how could this happen? And the way I understand it is she waived the the hearing where the prosecutor in New Hampshire would have to prove it's her, so that's done, and she waived the hearing where they have to, like, officially um, tell her she's got to come back to New York. She waived that, so it's done. So where we are at is, I think today, probably right now, they are processing her in New Hampshire, and then they are transporting her back to New York City, where her and Epstein lived in the Upper East Side for years. It's coming. She's coming home to face the music. She's going to be, um, they're going to make, She's going to make an appearance in the federal district court in Lower Manhattan. That's where Epstein was supposed to make his appearance. But if you remember, they had him in the Metropolitan Correctional uh, Facility, which is right there by the federal district court. They had him there. You would think that the most high-profile, high-suicide risk, most connected, most horrifying child abuser of all time they would have said okay we got to make sure this guy doesn't commit suicide or we got to make sure he's not killed so we got to get this man to trial or so he can talk so we can figure out this mess and of course they yeah uh, they said that he killed himself i guess using another man's hands and muscles and that was it so, oh yeah, also the guards that were on duty were sleeping. And the camera that was in his cell to make sure we get whatever weird stuff happens was not working. Nothing insane about all of that. So right when we were here, I feel like deja vu, right when we were here almost a year ago, it was like, oh my gosh, Epstein's arrest arrested, he's in lower Manhattan, he's set to be in federal district court, and then... Just like that, it was over. And um, so I'm gonna co I want to go down today to, um, to the federal district court. I'll, I'll want to show you guys the outside of it. I want to get a lay of the land today, walk around the building, kind of get a uh, knowledge of the side streets and stuff because I would like to cover it. Like on her big um, appearance day later this week, I'd like to be standing there with all the journalists when either the lawyers get there or when they come out after the hearing and talk at the podium and everyone's screaming questions. I'm going to try to be there. So, like I said, if it's not raining this afternoon, I like to go down there just before everything gets going, get a lay of the land. I haven't been down there in a year. 
and um, try to figure out where the journalists are supposed to stand. And like I said, I'd like to cover it. Um, what else for today? So I had a few, few thoughts hearing when she was arrested is wonder why she stayed in the United States. I figured that she would at least try to get to back to France. Someone, I think on, I heard on one of the major news stations said, even if she would have got back to France, it would have been hard for her to get or to be extradited. But to just sit here like, well, I wonder if the FBI is coming today or next week or whenever. Can't be a relaxing way to go. And then the, obviously the next question is, is she going to name names? You know, if she makes it there. That, that's what we were talking about a year ago. Is Epstein going to name names? What if he names all the names? And then he just was murdered or, sorry, didn't kill himself. And so is she going to name names? Is she going to talk about Prince Andrew? Old Andrew's in a funny spot with this whole thing. He, where Andrew is, is he's pretending to be working with the FBI. So his people will be like, he's trying to work with the FBI, but it, they just, it, they're not. And then the FBI is like, all right, well, do you want to talk this weekend or the next week? Let's make a date. And they're like, yeah, no, no, definitely not. And, um, I feel like he's the character in Fargo that's like, I'm working with you. Heck, I'm working with you here. We're cooperating. And they're like, okay, well, did the, do you want to cooperate? The heck do you mean? I'm working with you here. And so I have a feeling old Andrew will not be coming back to the United States in his lifetime. He is going to be hiding in some hole in Buckingham Palace pretending that I'm working with you here. I'm working with ya. If you want to watch, I did a video on his trash fire interview that he did with the BBC. I'll link it in the description. Um, okay. Also, I was thinking maybe since Epstein's dead that a strategy that Ghislaine would go with is, I was under his control. I was horrified. He said he was going to kill me if I did anything. I'm just blame it on him. It was all him. Since he's gone, I think that could be a issue or a strategy, I mean. It's going to be a hard fight for Ghislaine. She's pretty much in every picture that exists. If there's a victim of the Epstein saga, it's almost comical how many of them Ghislaine is in. You would think one picture of an abuse victim from Epstein that would just ha not her ever in, but it's like, oh wait, nope, she's in this one. And it's like, oh wait, she's not in this one. And then it's like, oh wait, she's leaning in, she's hanging from a tree. <laughs> um, all right, and then one other thing is, I thought was really interesting. So as you, as you remember, a year ago, almost to the month, Epstein disappears. All of a sudden, the case is just like, all right, well, I guess that's over. And all of a sudden, a bank that was in the Virgin Islands woke up and sprang to life. And I looked into it, and Epstein, in 2014, had applied for an international banking license in the Virgin Islands. And he had said that he wanted to pursue the dynamic discipline of international banking. And they said it was weird that he would get a banking license with being a convicted sex offender, but I'm sure he just paid someone off in the Virgin Islands. So we got this license for a bank. It doesn't look like he ever marketed for the bank, hired a staff. No one... Um, they were asking the people from the Virgin Islands, did you ever, was it, this bank ever regulated? Did you guys ever stop by and ask what kind of business they were doing? And they, uh, the regulatory people in the Virgin Islands were saying, we don't think it was ever open. We don't know of any business that it did. We were going to check in on it, but it just looked like it was never doing anything. But the, the license for it was renewed in 2014 and 15 and 16 and 17 and, and for five years. And, but 
didn't look like much activity. And then, listen how nuts this is. Epstein dies, and his um, estate transfers $12 million to this bank in December. So he dies in August. In December, it transfers $12 million. At the end of that year, the bank reports its assets as under $500,000. And so think about that. Epstein dies. His estate transfers $12 million to some bank in the Virgin Islands. That money immediately disappears. The bank reports it has like $500,000. And then that next year, the bank license wasn't renewed. So someone got $12 million that probably should have gone to these victims or, you know, God knows what as this whole thing comes to an end. But you know you're a sick freak when once you are suicided for your child abuse, worldwide, unspeakable crimes that a offshore bank comes to life, receives $12 million, launders that money, and then goes out of business. And the Benny Hill theme plays. So anyway, next time you see me, I will be on scene in front of the federal district court. Also down there is the New York City's occupied protests, like they're a version of Chaz, so might as well walk through that, see what's going on. I hope that you guys are having a good start to the week. Keep it here for Ghislaine Maxwell on scene coverage on True Crime Loser. Why, Stiven, why?